to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your guide at Bear Wozniak. We just got back from Hawaii. We're in Cocoa Beach right now. We filmed season three of Long Ride Home. Very daunting and challenging experience whenever we shoot Long Ride Home. And I just really appreciate the, the brotherhood that kind of comes out when we're uh, riding together and serving the Lord together. We do face a lot of adversity uh, on, the, on this, uh, in our ministry, especially when we're doing the ride, because we're on the attack and we do expect some some re to ex experience some resistance but we had a great time there uh, we rode we worked hard the men got to do a little bit of surfing and sailing too so that was pretty cool uh but i want to uh, the, the thought struck to me today while i was in prayer about the name of jesus uh, what a powerful name uh what a powerful name it is uh if you're at a cocktail party and you bring up buddha probably no one's gonna blink or think twice about it but if you bring up if you were to say you know, I was praying to Jesus yesterday, or, I, or you bring up the name of Jesus Christ, it kind of makes people feel awkward or kind of shocked, or they might want to move away from you, or they might want to draw closer, but there's no other name that has that sort of riveting sort of attention, uh, whether good or positive or curious or what, uh, than the name of Jesus Christ. And we just, just want to lift up his name right now. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for, for what this is all about. Uh, it, it's, it's not so much a mission. It's not so much uh, uh, a pursuit of excellence as it just is a pursuit of loving you back. And we want our ministry primarily to be a ministry to you, Jesus. And we ask that this radio show would have a significant, uh, be a significant blessing to you as you bless us and also have an impact on people. So we thank you, Lord. Our guest today, uh, you know him well, uh, Jason Jones. He's a, he's a cast member of Long Ride Home. He has his own radio show, The Jason Jones Show, the podcast now that is reaching thousands and thousands of people immediately uh, just exploded. And you can find that on almost any podcast app. I was just with Jason in Hawaii as we shot Long Ride Home. And, um, and now uh, uh, we met up in Washington, D.C. last week uh, talking about the crisis in the church right now. Jason Jones, I can't think of a better guest to have on my show right now than you, and thank you for, for being here. We'll talk about uh, all that's going on in your life and the crisis in the church. Aloha. Aloha, Bear. Thanks for having me on your podcast. It's a radio show. Radio show. He radio. Always, he always tries to make it a podcast. I forget. Again. You know, I try yeah. to, it's like the ancient <laughs> medium, like smoke signals, radio. I have a podcast. You know, I'm in oh, the yeah. future. You're living in the future. This is like going in a time machine. Radio. Hey tell, hey, tell us about your podcast. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's it's pretty gritty, and it, it's a <laughs> it was immediate success on on uh, in the podcast world. Tell us about the Jason Jones Show. Well, you know, I, you inspired me, Bear. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time, and uh, a friend of mine who's a big shot in the in the new media world, digital marketing world. Uh, we actually met because he flew from uh, San Francisco to Washington D.C and met me at the March for Life last year. And he said, I follow your FaceTime lives and they're really wild. They are, and you, they are. And he said, you should, uh, you should do a podcast. And I said, ah, and he said, I'll edit it. You know, it, it's, I'll edit it for free and I'll be your partner. And so we started doing this podcast. My real goal was to really just um, leverage whatever audience I could build again to sort of do our mission, which is very simple to promote the incomparable dignity of the human person and to inspire people to live in solidarity with the vulnerable. And in doing so, I was thinking about pro-life. I was thinking about ethnic and religious minorities uh, that my organization, the vulnerable people work with, maybe bringing in my work in the movie business. But unfortunately, like the week we launched the great crisis to the church that Happened. I think it wasn't unfortunate. I think that that you were you, that you were pushed to the forefront of the battle. I mean, you always have been, but uh, your voice. I've always said your voice needs to be heard. Your face needs to be seen. And I think it was. I don't think it was unfortunate. I think that 
God put you, uh, put you right there uh, at a very vital time in the church uh, to speak boldly and with clarity and without angst. And so we're very grateful for, you, for your podcast and the work that you've been doing. So, yeah, so, you, so tell Thanks, us sir. about it. Tell us, tell us about it. Well, I've, been, you know, my, I've been telling you for five years to do a podcast. Yeah, my thought is, you know, what's great about podcast is I want to just be me and find the audience that's like me. So with, with radio, you have to, it's broadcasting, right? You're, you have to reach a broad audience of people that share something in common. This show, it's Catholics, Christians, lovers of Jesus. But you can really narrow cast or tribal cast and that's what I'm hoping to do with podcasts because a guy like me, um, I'm just a guy like, you know, I think guys used to be, you know, like when your grandpa would sit in the garage with his friends playing poker and talking and they would just speak unaffectedly. They would, you know, they'd come back from the office or from my grandpa from the Ford factory and maybe they'd have to be on their best behavior all day, but they'd get in the garage and they'd play cards and they would just be themselves. And so that's my hope with my podcast. I just, if I think it, I say it. And, um, and so I feel very free. I mean, it's probably not for everybody, but there, there are folks like me out there who maybe don't feel that a lot of programming reaches them. And this is hopefully a place where they but, can hear a guy who loves Jesus talking like a guy. You and, you, and you reached thousands of people on your very first show. So, I mean, it's, it's yeah, pretty it was incredible. ridiculous. Our, our, our first show... Um, what's great is you can see as they're listening to, and, um, it had reached half the countries in the world, all 50 States. What I really loved is I could see, for example, Mundelein Seminary within three hours of us going live, you could see one person at Mundelein Seminary, two, three, five, and it got up to like 46 people. So I knew that they were, the seminarians were sharing it with each other. Yeah, and you, 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 you can see that I had a member of Congress when we were in Washington, DC, come up to me and he said that it was a little radical. He said, I listen to your podcast. And he's like, wow, you really just say it like you think it. And I don't, I don't aspire to be controversial. There's no, no sensationalism. I don't try to shock anybody, but I just say something. I just try to speak plainly. This, this is the time. Now, like you and I, we don't agree on, on all of the, the directions or, or the strategies necessarily about what, and what's going on, but we definitely agree about the great need. And there's one thing we really need to get down to, and that is the freedom to have an open dialogue. There's so much PC out there, the university system, the, you know, the so-called, the place where, when, and when Catholic universities were created, the times of Thomas Aquinas, you could talk about anything, you could question anything, you know, and now it's, if you don't live in this narrow uh, a di a frame of conversation, you, you, you're not allowed to speak, but well, what, I, what I like about you is that it's an, we, right now we need to have an open and wide discussion about what's going on and what we can do about it, and, and maybe um, through that process come up with some solutions too. Well, well, yeah, thank you, Bear, for saying that. I asked the member of Congress, what did I say that was so controversial? He said, you called for disbanding the USCCB. And I said, I didn't, I didn't call for disbanding the Jesuits or anything. I said, the USCCB is a 501c3. That goes back to 2001. I, I became Catholic in 2002. I think of myself as a new Catholic. In this present uh, organizational structure, it's only been around one year longer than I've been in the church. I don't think it's that controversial uh, in the light of this scandal to say, what the heck is going on with this organization as lady? Maybe we should, should think about disbanding it. And yeah, so if that's what we think of as radical speech, we've gotten to a place where Catholics don't feel free to uh, engage, to discuss uh, to me, uh, disbanding the USCCB should seem like one of the most obvious things, even if you don't agree with me on, uh, it's an obvious place we should begin to look and say, what is well, the role yeah. that the USCCB has played in this present crisis in the hierarchy? Yeah. And we're going to take a break here in a few moments. I may not necessarily agree with that, but we need to have a dialogue. And one thing I know about Jason is he's not some rebel. Uh, he's, he's not some crazy person out there. He's a person who loves our church. And is a, is is a, is a devoted to um, the magisterium of the church. We were at we were at the Napa Institute in Washington D.C. Was it just last week or this week? Last week. Yeah, and I'm at the Catholic Leadership Conference. This has been a wild three weeks, Barry. Yeah, yeah, and it's Amazing. It's, ex, it's excellent timing. But what I loved about the Napa Institute is you had Cardinal Mueller, you had um, archbishops, bishops, priests, princess. We had princesses. Had, we had uh, Dr. Janet Smith was excellent. Dr. Tim Gray. Dr. Scott Hahn, we had um, uh, Curtis Martin, we had um, just so many people that who are just so in love with the church and so devoted to their bishops 
in the proper way and, and, and gathering together to say, let's really, first of all, define the issue or issues. Let's explore the truth about things. And then let's come together and begin to have a dialogue. And so everyone should be able to say whatever they want and have a, a moment to come to a point of view of clarity about the issue and, and direction. We're talking with Jason Jones. Um, Jason, we're going to take a break right now, but they can find you where? Well, my website is movie2movement.com or thegreatcampaign.org. And your, and your uh, podcast is? The Jason Jones Show, and we're on iTunes. On iTunes. Okay, we'll be right back. This is Bear Wozniak with The Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with one of my, my best friends and a man I admire greatly, Jason Jones. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking today with my good friend Jason Jones, and I, you know, I know when this uh, this summer of sorrow uh, came to us, it's almost uh, like a winter in 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 the summer uh, that came to us this August um, and September. My wife Cindy said to me, "Bear, do you realize how important your ministry is, the Deep Adventure Ministry is now, because you're challenging men to be real men." And, uh, and it's really the point of the spear right now because men have abdicated their role uh, in, within the family, within society. They've, they've gotten quieter and smaller, uh, almost, as Jason says, genderless. And it's time for men to be men again. That's why I'm so glad Jason is on our TV show, Long Ride Home. But I want to invite you men to go to my website, deepadventure.com. We have a private Facebook group called Bears Man Cave. You can't join it by going to Facebook. You have to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and join us there. We're actually going to be, we actually have video chat meetups about every two or three weeks. And within that community of the man cave, we really challenge and encourage and equip uh, one another in the faith. It's time for us as men to step up into the breach. Um, during the time of Nehemiah, when, the, the, when Nehemiah challenged them to rebuild the walls, was he, was he challenging the priests? Or was he challenging the laity? It was the laity, the domestic church, one man and his family at a time rebuilding one section of the wall. And so, men, uh, go to my website, deepadventure.com, and please uh, consider joining Bear's Man Cave. And women, if you have a man in your life that you feel is, is, needs to have a little uh, more of a uh, sort of a iron sharpening iron type of experience, uh, consider asking them to come to our cave too. And you can even sponsor their membership for them. But we're talking with Jason Jones Jason, uh, the the conference at Napa that we were just at in D.C., this is a delayed broadcast, but we were just there a few days ago. What were the things that came out there that you thought were the most uh, insightful or, 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 or challenging, or what, what things really stood out from you from the conversations we all got to have? Oh, I mean, the one thing that stood out for me is for, for a guy who I've kind of been tilting at some of the corruption in the hierarchy now, almost as long as I've been in the church. I had worked for, I actually, when I came into the church, I was working for Human Life International and went on to work for American Life League. And in American Life League, we had a project, this is almost 50, yeah, almost 15 years ago, where we were pointing out corruption in the hierarchy. And you know, in those days, it was, you were, it was look, people would look down their nose at you. A lot of the folks in that room, were what I call the beautiful people, you know, very influential Catholics. The, the kind of Catholics that um, feel really personally betrayed because they trusted uh, folks like Whirl and um, they've supported, greatly supported the church. Uh, you know, I, I think of guys like you and I, we, we go into the orchard and pick apples. These guys paid for the tractors, the fertilizer, bought the land. I mean, they've, some of them, these were the largest supporters of the church. I think they feel personally betrayed and, um, so I felt like somebody, it was like in those old movies when you have a little wagon train being attacked by Comanche and then the cavalry finally arrives, you know. Um, so I looked around and there were some real big heavyweights there. And I felt like the cavalry has arrived. Praise God. Well, well said. You know, here's the thing. Um, I've been reading and studying the life of St. Paul. And this week I've been uh, reading about the, when Paul was in Lystra. With with it was with Lystra with Barnabas, and he looked at a woman and he prayed for her and she was healed. 
or a, or a man, I should say. And then the people of Lystra said, oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. You must be Zeus and Hermes. We're going to sacrifice an ox to you. And the priest rolls up with his ox cart and says, you guys are just absolutely amazing. You are gods. And they go, no, no, no. We're, we're here to serve the Lord. We're, it's, it's Jesus Christ that we're talking about. Two weeks later, these same people uh, stoned Paul and drug him outside the city walls and threw him, to, threw him on the ground thinking he was dead. There's a problem in the church when you put bishops on a pedestal. There's also a problem when you go to the opposite extreme and say, well, now that you blew it, now we're going to throw you on the dung heap. We as Catholic laity, we need to wake up and really seek and pursue truth and realize that bishops are, are, just, are just men in a, in a, in a very unique, uh, um, with a unique uh, ordination and position, uh, cardinals and popes too. And as a student of church history, I mean, I can see how many horrible popes we've had. But we need to be real careful right now, as we've seen like in the Kavanaugh hearing, just because someone is accused doesn't mean they're guilty. We really need to have a process of vetting and seeking truth. How do we go about doing that, Jason? Well, Bear, something you said reminded me of what really did strike me. There was a lot of serious talk from people who just a year ago were telling me I was a little too out there in my criticism of some of the bishops and uh, who are now calling for the direct, the laity to elect the bishops. And I'm like, whoa, oh. No, that's, that's so, heresy was dealt with a thousand years no. ago. I mean, I don't know if yeah. you heard that. I, I heard no, that. No, it's a, the congregational heresy. No, it's a... I'm personal. like, yeah, 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 let's slow down here. Um, you know, and... and and maybe because I have a podcast, I, I, I might speak too freely here. And, and But I just want to say something that I think, which you were talking about. I am not at all shocked at sin, right? Nor even hurt or scandalized if I found out that a priest or a bishop fell into sexual morality. It does not scandalize me. There are a lot of bishops and priests, right? So, of course, that's going to happen. I'm not shocked if I find out a bishop or a priest is embezzling, he has a gambling addiction and 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 falls into debt and there's a lot of priests people fall into sin i'm not shocked if i find out a priest had a back injury and gets addicted to prescription drug medication that leads to all sorts of problems it doesn't scandalize me but what the where the real scandal comes in with this present crisis is the bullying the organiza right. or, organizational structure of abuse of young men the uh, sort of the cabal like nature that seems to exist in the church. Like this is really unimaginable, unbelievable stuff that you would read in a Jack Chick track and just shake your head and go, what a knucklehead. And to see that this is actually existing. And I guess that shouldn't scandalize us, right? Because people are, this is what people do. Yeah, but these but, are people, go ahead, I'm sorry. But, but it does shock and scandalize, right? It's, it's just, it seems well, it, unbelievable. You know, one of the things we talked about there, Jason, is first of all, it's, it's, uh, it's a betrayal of trust. It's not just, uh, you know, and what's one of the, one of the things that we really got to start talking about is the fact that one of the things that we really need to start talking about is that um, uh, a, a large percentage of priests are sexually active. There may be upwards of 20% that are, or more that are sexually active. And most of those are uh, same sex, uh, same sex uh, attraction that they're acting out in a homosexual way. And a lot of that is where most of the most of the the pedophilia uh, we 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 fought and have dealt with to a large degree uh, for those that are that are minors. But it's these these seminarians, uh, the young adults that were um, that were, you know, the, the the families that love the church and sent their sons to seminary. It's this it's these that have felt the most intimately connected with the church whose sons. Were uh, were uh, victimized by by the, this predatory behavior, so I think we got to start at the root of it. One of the roots of it is that we have a lot of priests that are not being faithful to their vow of celibacy, and a large and and most of this predatory behavior is man on man or man on boy or man on young man, and we need to look at this as I call it the homosexual mafia within the church. It's a very very real thing, and we talked about there maybe asking each priest to, to uh, rededicate his vow of celibacy. And if they don't think they can honestly do that, they need to uh, leave the priesthood. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, we need honesty, right? We need honesty and transparency. And um, 
you're right that that it's that when a young man and I don't know how it happens. I think sometimes the abused become the abusers and uh, the victim then becomes a part of this cabal and becomes trapped. And I would like to see priests and bishops. uh, I use the term self-deport if they need to leave the priesthood, if they can't keep their vows, they need to step away. They, They need not to be a scandal. And, you know, we just had um, Nadia Murad won the Nobel Prize for speaking out on behalf of the Yazidi. She was a survivor of, of ISIS um, and, and sex trafficking. Um, and I think the church has lost its light um, speaking out for the abused and the vulnerable around the world with our own co-religionists, the Chaldeans and the Syrian Christians in Iraq and Syria being brutalized because we're stuck battling these decadent this decadent homosexual mafia in the church that is distracting us uh, from sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and living lives in solidarity with the most vulnerable. Um, And we see sort of this victimist mindset that does the false moral equivalence, uh, seamless garment theology that says prudential solutions to problems like um, a a wage, uh, what is a living wage compared to defending the child in the womb from the violence of abortion or uh, a Yazidi girl. In, we're, talking, in my- we're talking with Jason Jones. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. It's usual I have to cut Jason off. He always has so much, so much to say. We, we'll be right back with another, with another uh, segment with Jason. But Jason, they can find you at Movie to Movement. And your two books are? The Race to Save Our Century and The World is on Fire. And you can get them on Amazon. Get them on, on Amazon. You know, if you subscribe to our newsletter, you'll see that every week. We're promoting Jason Jones' book. We, we love Jason Jones. This is Bear Wozniak. You can go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter, and you can get this radio show sent to you every Saturday morning before it even airs in a YouTube format. By the way, if you want to, you can go to Bear Wozniak on YouTube and subscribe to this so you can see what Jason looks like and uh, watch us you know, in a video format. We need to add about 600 more people to our YouTube channel so we can get a lot more promotion from YouTube. So we'd love it if you'd go there and and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Personal holiness. Personal holiness. Times of solitude. Daily times of prayer daily times of meditation on God's Word, on the teachings of the church. Let the Word of God sift you. Let the Word of God pour through your heart and bring fresh water uh, into your soul, living water into your heart. Make your heart of flesh into a heart, or your heart of stone into a heart of flesh that beats with the love of the Lord. Praying the rosary, the liturgy of the hours, Eucharistic adoration. It's time, it's time for us to take the log out of our own eye so that we can take the splinter out of our brothers. We are not called to ignore the splinter in our brothers. We're called to take it out, but we need to begin to take even a deeper, we need to go deeper in our life of purity and our life of holiness with the Lord so that we can. We're talking with uh, Jason Jones about the the winter that came in, in the summer this year. Remember, Uh, Our popes have told us that there would be a new springtime, but you can't have springtime without winter. But I remember as a young child, uh, I I I lived in North Dakota as a real young kid, and they talked about winter wheat, the spring spring harvest. They'd actually, I think, plant wheat in the the fall, at the end of the fall, and it would come forth with with a springtime harvest. This is a time of winter, but I have to tell you that when the Holy Spirit is moving, the Holy Spirit is moving and that there is no doubt in my mind that the fire of the Holy Spirit is, is, with, is moving within the church now to purify, to purely, to thoroughly purge the floor, as John the Baptist said. If the Holy Spirit is moving, why would you give up on thinking people wouldn't want to uh, respond to the gospel right now? The Holy Spirit is moving in a big and powerful way to cleanse the church. Of course, there's going to be a fire of evangelism right now. I've had two or three people in the last three weeks or so since uh, this, this uh, scandal has broken who have said, now that I see how you are being honest with this 
in dealing with this and realizing your popes and your bishops aren't aren't perfect, uh, that there's such a thing as sin within the church. Now I see how you're dealing with this in this way. I want to become Catholic. So don't get don't lose heart. If the Holy Spirit is moving, the Holy Spirit is moving. Why would you lose heart? If there's tongues of fire falling right now to purify the church, there's also tongues of fire falling to um, to 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 bring new souls to the Lord and to the church. So I am never more thrilled than I am right now because this scandal has been going on and it's been under, it's been buried and it's been covered up. But now the Holy Spirit is on the move. All these prayers, all this work that you've been doing, this is the fruit of it. This isn't the breaking of the of the reed. This is the fruit of it. Uh, and you can expect a springtime, a blossom and a fruit. We're talking with Jason Jones. Jason, what do you think about... Uh, what? Let's talk more about this. The, the the homosexual, as they've called it, the homosexual mafia within the church. There is a there is a a man that I know who was a cross dresser who is now in seminary, and uh, I didn't know how to respond to that. Do I do I tell the bishop? Hey, I think you should investigate this without myself looking like I'm involved in calumny and and uh, and I am somehow spreading gossip. Um, talk to us. I mean, talk to us about. The, the real, the, this great, great scandal is all basically it's because of homosexuality within the church and within our clerics. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, please, please write the bishop, and I know our bishop respects you. And it's not, first of all, I mean, I want to be very transparent, not to create scandal, but just so to folks listening, uh, they don't feel like we're pointing fingers at them. I came into the church in 2003 in the midst of the scandal. That's when I started, and every all these Catholics were ashamed of being Catholic at the time. And they could, I can't believe you're converting. That's when I started wearing like the biggest scapulars I could find, um, and you know, so I could share that I was becoming Catholic, and I was so excited. I had become when I decided to become a Catholic, when I assented to the truth of the Catholic faith. I was going to um, daily mass with my with my trusty Magnificat. You know, every Catholic man should travel with the Magnificat and Ring Magazine. And you bring your patron saint with you to hang out with you. Sam Maximilian Colby travels with me. But I, um, I, you know, I was struggling with a lifetime of habits of sexual sin. And, um, you know, I was responsible for an abortion by the time I was 17, had two children by the time I was 19. And so here I want to be a Christian, I want to be a Catholic, but I was really felt like trapped that I would never escape sort of this the cycle of, of sexual sin. And so I didn't tell anyone I was becoming Catholic because I did not want to be a scandal. I thought I will be embarrassing to the church if people knew how I lived, you know, what I struggled with. And it was then when the eruption of the scandal, I remember thinking and I uh, I said to myself, well, my problems, uh, that might be good publicity for the church um, at this point. And, and that's when I started sharing that I'm becoming Catholic. It was because of the scandal, because I didn't want to be an embarrassment. So I, I agree with you. This is a great time to share the gospel. A lot of us are confirmed. And so there's so many people, if you lived in the world in this era, of course, of course, it's the sexual revolution and we've been caught up in it. Uh, all of us, to one degree or another, have been impacted by it. Um, so you're right. There is this homosexual mafia, this predatory mafia. But I don't struggle with same-sex attraction. The last thing I want is that young man or woman who's wrestling with same-sex attraction to think that we're zinging rocks in their direction. Very important. Well, that's, that's not what we're talking about, right? Right. Um, we all struggle with our sexuality. Um, you can't turn on the radio without it being inflamed or turn on television and there's a commercial or you check into a hotel and literally on your key, there's like, you know, come to the spa and there's a half naked woman. So we see this everywhere. Um, and so of obvious. So I don't want people struggling with same sex attraction to think that we're, we're throwing rocks at you. The problem though is there has literally become a cabal, a very aggressive, violent, predatory abusers and it's um in the hierarchy as well and so this has to this has to be dealt with the young man the man who's a cross dresser that you know that entered the seminary i know who his pastor is and he's a very effeminate man and so you wonder what was that relationship and not to to be countless but you can't be entering the seminary as a cross dresser this is absolutely unbelievable um 
And so I think that each and every one of us need to be vigilant. I Right before I called you, I have a friend, one of my best friends. He's an amazing man. He's a professional athlete, the most loving, kind man I know, and he's a Freemason. And I'm always witnessing him to leave Freemasonry and try to enter the church. Sent him to a priest that I thought was an Orthodox priest, and this priest told him, you can be a Mason and a Catholic. And my friend oh my said, God. my friend said, well, if I can be both, I'll just be a Mason. I, I don't need to be both. I thought I had to be one or the other. Wow. And so now he's, and this was like yeah, but, 10 but, years but, ago. But, but, but let's talk about but, this. But, but real quick, I want to get to this. So he called me just now because we both share a birthday. And I love this man. Um, but in my parish, there's a Mason who wears his ring, who's a Eucharistic minister. I challenge him every Sunday to stop receiving communion, let alone distributing communion. I go to my priest. I've written letters. I think we all need to be vigilant. Um, so it's not that I hate Masons. It's that it's incompatible with the Catholic Church. I pray for them. You know, I'm a member of the Knights of the Immaculata. I pray for them daily for their conversion. And it's the same. If you have a young man that in your that you know is entered the seminary, he's a cross-dresser, God forbid the worst thing for him is to become a priest. God forbid without conversion. God forbid. Well, this is, um, this is the reason why we have... Now, first of all, I used to... I, for, for about eight or nine months, I, I worked to help a Child Help USA through a transition back in the 80s. Uh, they're the ones that are the, the crisis, uh, uh, crisis phone line for people that are, are suicidal or, or have been, or no, excuse me, it's for people that have been abused. And that, that, that hotline was basically uh, homosexuals and handling those, those calls from people who were being abused. And I got to know, you know the man who was in charge of that. And I don't know, I can't speak scientifically or only, only anecdotally, but so many people that have same-sex attraction now were imprinted by in some sort of abusive behavior in their youth. Him and most of the people that work there can point to a time when they were, when they were someone acted as a predator on them. And so, we need to have we need to have uh, a mission of ministry and mercy to people that have same-sex attraction, and not to be uh, judgmental and critical. But when they're predatory, uh, that needs to be dealt with. And secondly, if you have same-sex attraction or gender dysphoria, um, uh, Pope Benedict sent out a letter to the to the bishops, saying, and it was never read. It was it was pocketed by the the person that he sent it to, that if people have same sex attraction, they shouldn't be entering the seminary. Uh, so we need to deal with this. And what happens, I think, in the in the in the pulpit, is you get so many th- this this priest that you're talking about. When I go to mass there, I know I'm receiving the Eucharist. We know that regardless of someone a priest is in mortal sin or not, when he's in that position as priest. Uh, uh, I know when I re- go there, I receive the Eucharist, but I pray the rosary during his homilies because his homilies are basically about himself or just being nice or why can't we all get along. We, that seven or eight minutes, ten minutes we have at Mass, priests need to start speaking truth, gritty truth. Yesterday our, our deacon talked about, um, about becoming like children when we could have talked about a lot more grittier uh, situations. It, was, it, was, uh, it w- could have been... It was a talking about when Jesus referring to, to divorce. We could have talked about annulment. We could have talked about we need to get our priests to speak more gritty. But a lot of the priests give watered-down homilies because they're sexually active. And mm. they know right there that they, they can't uh, speak the truth because they'd be convicting themselves. We'll be right back with Jason Jones. Jason, thank you so much for taking up this, this cause with us today. We'll be right back. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I want to invite you people, you guys to know, Long Ride Home, uh, our EWTN reality TV show, the motorcycle-based reality TV show that aired on the EWTN network, and also the Armed Forces Network, is now available on Google Play, Amazon Prime Video, and iTunes. So you can watch it on your TV, uh, and we encourage you. This is the time when you can power watch all 10 episodes and get, you know, wives, turn it on and watch it with your husbands or your sons and uh, send a link to your, uh, uh, to your brother-in-law and uh, let's get men to watch this show. And we want to also encourage you to go to our website, deepadventure.com, subscribe to our mail list, uh, and um, we'll send you out our radio show every week. 
And if you want to, you can go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak, and you can watch the radio show along with a lot of other stuff uh, on YouTube. And please subscribe because it's a big deal. If we can get about 600 more people to subscribe to our channel, uh, YouTube will help blow us up and get our, move our ministry. I also want to invite you. You may not be, be, get to be my friend on Facebook. You can follow me, Bear Wozniak. I'm the only Bear Wozniak there. And then you can participate in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism. I teach a catechism class every single weekday morning at 7 a.m. wherever I happen to be. It's called Bear Time. And uh, there's usually an ocean in the background, and, we, and we're going step by step through the catechism. I think we're on about paragraph 2048 right now. So come join us for the Ocean Sunrise Catechism on Facebook. Follow me, and then by following me, you can, you can find that. Jason Jones, welcome back to the, sh welcome back to the show. Um, talk to me about this issue of sexually active priests, and, and, and how do we have mercy on those that are challenged, or how do we, but how do we deal with uh, the reality that it's... Uh, it's um, of what it is. Well, Barry, I, you know, I love your, your just the whole sort of um, line of gesture to use a filmmaking term, uh, a line of the line of gesture of you're a whole apostolate with this idea of adventure. And I would let's see these priests, not these predatory abusers. Um, you know, I see them as people we need to just shoulder check out of the way. But um, but these priests that are stuck in, 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 in sin that are that are sexually active there are there are cohorts in this great adventure for holiness, right? So, um, because we have the same struggles, and it's a challenge. And this is the adventure of the apostolic life, right? It is an adventure. I was just thinking, it's today's my birthday. I've been on the road for almost three weeks. I had meetings with ambassadors, with a princess, with me, with, with me, with Bear Wozniak, with Steve Bannon. I hung out with Scott Hahn and Laura, Laura Ingram. Ingram and. Raymond Arroyo, and and I've been in Chicago and all over Texas and Washington, D.C., and now I'm in, after this interview, I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to have breakfast with the most wonderful Catholics in the world. And this is all really was sparked by my desire to protect the weak from violence. And now we have together to try to keep each other in a state of grace and holiness, and it's challenging. Let's be clear. This is challenging. What percentage of us listening to this right now, struggle with pornography or have committed adultery. This is us. This is the lady. The lady is, you know, the hierarchy. We have the scandal in the hierarchy. We as the lady, we've been a scandal for 50 years, right? I mean, yeah, we get away with murder. 60 years. The, the Catholic lady, us, we're just this huge scandal yesterday. Can I tell you what I did yesterday, Bear, to create scandal? Or, yeah, no. what, did, what did you do wrong this time? Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> I'm tired. Oh, God forbid. You didn't watch football on a Sunday. God forbid, Bear, I'm only on a couple of your episodes, because if I became famous, I'd be just trouble. So um, I'm uh, I'm tired. I'm getting, I, I get to the airport. The guy from the rental, from the hotel shuttle driver literally does a rolling stop. Like, I'm a big athletic guy. He rolls. I spring up. I grab my luggage. He doesn't even stop, and he pulls off, and I yell, are you serious? <laughs> like... Are you serious? And I yell so loud, he stops, okay? And I get in there and I, I go, are you serious? You're just gonna roll on when you see a dude there? He goes, well, I don't stop for a dude. And then I like kind of pushed him out of the way and threw my luggage on the rack. And and I was just very aggressive. And and, scan, and you know, and then I looked at my, my scapular. I don't know what it is about my scapular. I'm always pulling it down and it always pops up. And I'm like, oh, great pull the scapula down like it just it was a scandal all right we're scandalous as a people the lady we've been a scandal with divorce contraception like when you're catholic and you have two kids maybe you're not contracepting okay i understand but when you have a parish of catholics and every family has two kids there's a lot of contraception going on guaranteed okay we know that right i'm not looking at every catholic with one or two kids and saying <gasps> they're contracepting but when i see a parish a city full of Catholics. When I go to Chicago and there's a city full of Catholics and they all have two kids. Come on, I'm not, you know? Um, so we're scandalous. So we need to look at these priests not as our enemies. I'm not talking about the two bullies, the two priests that went and threatened Father Paul in Chicago. Um, Talk about that for a moment. People may not. Oh, I don't know if we should. If you're going to bring it up, you better, you better we do it. We could talk it about it on the Jason seconds. Jones show. There's a, a priest 
a bur- uh, allowed the lady in his parish to burn a gay pride flag that the uh, pastor that was there before him hung over the altar, draped over the altar. And uh, so two priests came, attempted to apprehend him and sent force by him, the cardinal or the bishop. sent by the cardinal to to try to forcibly send him to uh, a psychiatric ward. And they actually threatened his life. They said, "Well, you know, if you survive this," and I'm not talking about those guys. Look, I have friends, lay Catholic friends. I have priest friends that I can assume maybe struggle with sexual immorality. I have a lot of friends. I don't think they're all, uh, you know, about to be, you know, if they were Protestants raptured, right? They're not there yet. So in my big, beautiful community of friends, I know there's a lot of struggling going on. So we need to look at these priests as we look at our lay friends. We need to pray for them. We need to become their friends, live the apostolic life. Like you, Bear, like you're the example. You're the example. Like you're... You're waking up every morning, teaching the catechism, doing prayers. You're living the apostolic life. Like, who are you, Bear? Who are you? You're you, just a lay person. You're just a guy. Right. You're a guy that said, I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a radio show. I'm going to have a TV show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write books. You're not, you know, who's Scott Hahn? Scott Hahn is just a guy. He wasn't, right. you know, right. ordained. He wasn't, he's a guy. You're a guy. Well you're, well you're men who are living the apostolic life. Yeah. Everyone listening in your own way. We have different gifts and we are, we're in different places. And, you know, you know, my hobby, you're a surfer. I love to beat people up. I love Muay Thai you and love I love to beat jiu-jitsu. People. And it's, you like to beat people up. And the, and the, I, I like the, I'm, you know, I like the, uh, I don't like to beat people up there. Some people, maybe if Antifa comes <laughs> to one of my speeches, I'd like that. Come to my speech, Antifa. Oh my gosh, come here. How, was that door open? How did you just walk in? This is the beautiful charm. Look who just well, walks in my room. room. We're uh, hey pal. Hey, we're on. We're on. We oh, on? Patrick, we're aloha. Patrick Novakoski's in the house. Oh, I just he, he, uh, we were just talking about Patrick. You're at the Catholic Leadership Conference, you. but he Patrick tried you. to uh, make sure I didn't go. Actually, I was yeah, going so, to Notre Dame, so I couldn't. So, so yeah, was, let's wrap this up. You got a couple more minutes. Yeah. So, so I was saying though, Bear Patrick, I was telling Bear that I'm at the Catholic Leadership Conference. It is only for very important leaders. That's why I'm not personally there. invited, and I noticed Bear was Patrick not here. personally invited me not to come. He invited you not to come. No, he invited me to come. To be honest, I blackballed you. Yeah. This this but, event but, is there's only one Hawaii boy per event. But we, let, let's get let's get to the root of this, and that is that. Um, you know, Scott Hahn, by the way, said something really interesting at the Napa Institute meeting in D.C. last week. He said, so the, so the solution for a cardinal or a bishop who's been uh, acting a predatory or not uh, making, their other, making their priests accountable is to, is, to, is to laicize them, make them laity, take away their, their, their credentials or whatever, and then to um, send them off on a beautiful retreat someplace where they can spend the rest of their life in comfort. He said, what does that say about the laity? To just say, well, now you're a member of the laity. It's time for... for, for um, for, it's time for the word excommunication to begin to be taken into place again, too. I mean, reading 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul um, excommunicated someone, and then in 2 Corinthians, he brought them back because uh, their, day, their days of excommunication brought repentance. To just laicize a bishop who's predatory, what does that say about the laity? It's time for that, that you know, it's time, once again, for bishops to consider, for cardinals to consider, for popes to consider, this power of excommunication. Now, Jason, you got 30 seconds to wrap this up. We got to go. Bear, Bear, you nailed it. By the way, how many people listening, let's be clear, how many of the late here have actually, or priests, are, have already excommunicated themselves? How many people are living in a state of moral sin? You've excommunicated. You're, you're not receiving, you're, you're presenting yourself to communion and receiving it, but you shouldn't be. And so I agree with you, Bear. I think we should be talking about excommunication to bring conversion and repentance and to bring people back into true communion. Okay, with the let me church. just say this. We've opened up this dialogue. Jason and I have no idea. Uh, you know, we're, in other words, we're opening up a dialogue. We've talked about a lot of things, some that might be of worthy consideration, some that might be foolishness. But it's time for us to begin to have a dialogue again. It's time for us to be able to have the laity involved in reviewing priestly files, uh, folders, and, see, and, and, and asking priests once again to take a vow of celibacy. Um, seriously, and if they can't, they should leave the priesthood, I think. And we should also make sure that there aren't people of same-sex attraction entering our seminaries. 
Jason Jones Movie to Movement is his dot com is his main website. Uh, his podcast, the Jason Jones Show, is is riveting. You need to listen to it if you want to find out more about our ministry. You can go to deepadventure dot com. Jason, we got to go. Thanks for joining us. All right, on brother, the I'm going downstairs and getting an omelet. Is Patrick still there? He left. He beat okay, me down. Well, there. He's when going you to the see him, bar. when you see him, kick him in the shin. Okay. I will ki- I will shin kick that man. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. God All bless right. you, brother. God bless. Amen. Till next week. Aloha. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.